So you need to add some entities. What are those? If you're here, we assume you've already made some intents and understand that concept. Entities are Watson's way of handling significant parts of an input that should be used to slightly alter the way it responds to the intent. They can be used to clarify a user's intent. You create an entity with a set of values that can be used to trigger different responses. Then you use synonyms to list different ways that the same value might be entered. Let's say you have an application that lets you interact with a car. If you know your users often ask, how do I turn off my headlights, then their intent is to turn something off. For intents, you don't necessarily need to know what they want to turn off. If you want to handle these more specific details, you need entities. If your users want to turn off an appliance, you'd have an intent named turn underscore off. You'd include numerous examples of users asking about turning off appliances. For example, you may have users ask these questions. How do I turn off my headlights? I don't want to hear music anymore. Cancel cruise control. Switch my headlights off. Or I don't need my wipers anymore. Your entity could be appliances. So things like headlights, music, cruise control, and wipers would be included as values. Go to the entities page and select create. You'll want to name an entity appliances. When naming entities, you can use letters, numbers, underscores, and dashes, but not spaces. Then the values can be a list of appliances they might ask about, like music or heater or lights. Users may refer to each appliance in different ways, so it's best to also add synonyms. You can add radio and songs, both ways that a user might refer to music. When you're done adding an entity name, a value, and some synonyms, you can select done. Good job, you've created an entity to help qualify your user's input.